Good afternoon, my name is Megan Weininger and for my third and final presentation, I will be doing Schnecken. History and culture. Schnecken are a type of sweet bun slash roll that, has a traditional, that is a traditional Saturday morning treat in German homes. The name Schnecken means snails in German, which refers to the shape of the pastry. Schnecken has strong roots in the Jewish community, as although it is unknown, the original creator of the pastry, it is believed that it has started in the Jewish communities in Germany. These buns are most common in Germany, but can be seen in various forms throughout Europe. For example, in France, where they called pen au raisin or <clears throat> escargot. Nutrient composition. According to myfitnesspal.com, one large or about five small schnecken has this nutrient composition. 300 calories, 22 grams of fat, 42 grams of carbohydrates, seven grams of protein, two grams of fiber, and schnecken has about 20 grams of sugar per serving. Relationship to disease. Schnecken has a lot of added sugar. Consumption of added sugars has been implicated in an increased risk of a variety of chronic diseases, including obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is also known to have some in cognitive decline and even some cancers. Ingredients. I know the ingredients I use, such as the flour, are fresh because I went to the grocery store where they sell freshly milled flour. Freshly milled grain flour provides more nutrients than the normal store brand flour provides. Agriculture. According to the USDA, wheat ranks third among US field crops in planted acreage, production, and gross farm receipts. Most wheat is a cool season crop Winter wheat should be planted six to eight weeks before the first fall frost. Spring wheat can be planted once the ground is ready to work in early spring. This can tolerate heat better, but it should be able to develop before it reaches the full heat of summer, so it does not get scorched. Preparation. I got this recipe from my grandmother and she probably got it from her great grand. like it's been in my family for a while. Um, step one, to make dough, melt half a cup of butter in a small saucepan over medium low heat. Add milk and sugar to, and heat to just lukewarm, which is about 110 degrees. Stir to dissolve the sugar and pour the warm milk mixture into the bowl. Stir in the yeast and allow the mixture to sit for 10 minutes, and then stir in salt. Letting it sit allows the yeast to bloom. Step two, beat the whole, a whole egg and an egg yolk together, and then add the yeast mixture. Stir in, stir in the flour one cup at a time until you have sticky dough. Scrape the dough into a floured work surface and knead for about five minutes until you have a nice smooth dough. Butter a large bowl and then place the dough in a prepared bowl and cover with plastic wrap. Put the bowl in a warm place and allow the, the dough to rise for two hours until it tripled in volume. Brush a nine by 13 inch baking pan with melted butter, or you can use round pans. To prepare the small, to prepare the sugar pecan topping, melt the butter with brown sugar and light caro syrup in a small saucepan over medium low heat, stirring to combine. Remove from the heat and spread the mixture in the bottom of the pan and then sprinkle with chopped pecans. Step four, punch down the dough and turn it out of the bowl and lightly flour your work surface so it does, the dough does not stick. Knead for a minute and then use a, a floured rolling pin to roll the dough into a, a rectangular shape, about 15 by 12 and about a, an eighth of an inch thick. To make the cinnamon sugar filling, melt the butter in a small saucepan over a medium low heat and allow it to cool. Brush the butter thoroughly over the surface of the dough and in a bowl, mix together cinnamon and sugar and sprinkle 
that mixture evenly over the melted butter. Then align the dough with raisins and put one line straight down the middle of raisins. Roll it up, make sure the raisins are like the long way, don't roll it up the weird way because then there's like one that just has like a million raisins. Um, roll it up into like a jelly roll until there's like one long like roll. And then slice the log of the dough about like an inch thick in a, um, and put it on the pan on top of the syrup. You're gonna wanna preheat the oven to about six, um, 375 and then bake the snack in, until golden brown for about 20 to 25 minutes. Check them occasionally, making sure they aren't browning too quickly or like rising too fast. And then remove the pan from the oven and let cool to fi for five to 10 minutes and then turn them out of the pan. And then we like to put them back into the pan, but like upside down so that both sides get the nice syrupy taste on them. <clears throat> and then you can, I prefer them warm. So serve them warm. Tasting, I really enjoy this dish. It's sweet, sick, um, buttery. It can be really sticky because of the sauce. Um, the pecans add a nice crunch. We've tried it with other nuts. I just prefer the pecans more. And the raisins kind of cut through that super sugary, sugary taste with a little bit of a fruity taste. This is the picture. Please ignore the one that I already ate. I had to make sure it was done in the middle. <laughs> Comparison, I personally have a really strong connection to this dish. My grandmother has been making these every year for my entire family, for, for my mother's entire life, and, then, and even more. I think she got it from my great-grandmother. So it's been in my family for a really long time. And now that my grandmother is no longer with us, my mom and I have been carrying on the tradition. So every Christmas, we make about 20 pans total, and we give one to every person in the family so that they can enjoy it on Christmas morning as their opening presents with their own families. These are my references.